Why are you here? We need to talk. Or I, I need for you to listen to me talk. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. <laughs> Kids. His manners are almost as bad as mine. <laughs> I'd like to make that up to you, if you'll let me. Jack's working. I know. He said he would be. He's gotten really big, huh? <laughs> you think he'd like some juice or something? I have a couple to No, out. no, don't go to any trouble. We won't stay long. I, I just wanted to see you for a minute. Hey there. Hey there. Happy New Year, big guy. <laughs> oh, I just thought of something. It's his birthday soon, isn't it? It's hard to believe he was born right here. Anyway, the reason I came is to apologize to you. I ran in here the other night like a mad woman, and I said a lot of really hurtful things. It wasn't right, and I'm sorry. Well, that is the last thing no, I just, Would you let me finish, please? Finding out that you knew Winston Lowe's knocked the wind right out of me. And then I got angry, and I got so angry I couldn't even think about anything else. I came here... I came here to hurt you, and I didn't... I sort of forgot we weren't the only ones in the room. Oh. Oh, you mean the baby? We're the grown-ups. I think we have to remember from now on that everything we do has an effect on these... these little ones who are looking up to us for answers, you know? There's more at stake than just the two of us, and I... I want you to know that I will not forget that again. Hey. We're back! Hey, so where's this Ghostbuster friend of yours? You pick him up? Mm-hmm. Who are you gonna call? Uh, Jake, Molly, this is, uh, Hugh Dean Whittle from Austin, Texas, as you can say. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> Hugh Dean, uh, very generous of you to, to come all this way on, on New Year's to help us out. Ah, heck, this is my idea of starting the year off right. Now, let's get to work and catch us a ghost. Come on, Katie, let's get moving or we'll miss the train. I have no intention of walking to Bay City. We're only going for three nights. What's all this? Well, I couldn't decide what to wear, so I brought a selection. That way you can have your choice of what you want to see me in. All right, all right. Uh, there Whoops. and there. I choose. Simon. Let's go. Wait, wait, wait. What if one of those is the bag that has my lingerie in it? I'm telling you, Simon, you will never forgive yourself. I'll live. I wonder what Lily is doing tonight. Actually, Luke just called. Oh, he he did. said his mommy's gonna let him stay up and watch TV specials, so I guess they're having a quiet night too. Well, you know there's such a thing as too much quiet. You know, the best thing, the best New Year's Eve that your daddy and I ever had was making fudge. Fudge? Yes, making fudge. And some crazy old aunt of his was here, Aunt Effie, I think her name was. And she read tea leaves. And she told us all about the future. She predicted that you would be in my life. And you were. And, uh, now I can't promise to tell your fortune. But let's make a little fudge, shall we? Oh, who could that be? Hello. Hello. Hey, Joe. Hey. Come on in. Happy oh. New Year to you. Oh, yeah, really? Thanks. Same to you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Happy New Year, Emma. Well, how nice. Thank you. And, and Happy New Year to you. Thank it's you. Lovely. What... Well, what is this? It's uh, panettone. Yeah? It's a kind of cake they eat in Italy this time of the year. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, well, well, we were just about to, uh, to embark on a family tradition of our own. We were going to make a little fudge. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Why don't you take off your coat and join us? We'll, we'll open this wine while we're cooking uh, the fudge. No, 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 no. I can't really stay, but, uh, but thanks anyway. I just come by to say hello, and I thought maybe you might have seen Rose. 
today's low of 33 degrees. Clear tonight with the temperature dropping to a cool 19. Sunshine tomorrow and a high of I knew it. With the I knew it. The northwest at 14 miles per hour. You knew what? Currently 20. I knew that you'd be sitting on your lonely tush watching New Year's Eve on TV. I am not alone. Oh, no? No, the children are here. They're great company. I hope you didn't come all the way over here to remind me how alone I am. Me? Never. I'm here on a mission of mercy. I'm here to save you. From what? From yourself. From your do the right thing, say all the right things self. Listen, you cannot let this night go by without ringing in Simon's chimes for the new year. That's wonderful, but you've forgotten one minor detail. Me? Never. Simon's bells have already been rung. By Katie. He's married now. So, what are you gonna, you tell me you're gonna go cold turkey for two years just because Katie Peretti said I do to Simon so he could have a green card? No, 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 no. You gotta do this. It's gotta be tonight. Why tonight? Are you kidding me? Are you, don't you know that whoever you spend New Year's Eve with is the person you spend the rest of the year with? Ugh, these people in the flatlands. Don't you have any traditions? Yes, we have plenty, but it sounds to me like that's one you made up all by yourself. That's fine. Suit yourself. You want to spend the rest of the year without Simon, but this... this is a lonely bed that you're making. And a lonely bed that you will be lying in. Oh, where is the wonder from down under tonight? He's probably boarding a train for his honeymoon right about now. And you're sitting here letting that happen? Ah, uh, you are a piece of work. I trust Simon. Nothing is going to happen between Simon and Katie. Hello, this is conniving Katie we're talking about here. You, you don't think she's gonna try to get him as high as a butterfly and bubbly, and then when he's just enough blotto and he's thinking about you, she's gonna come in with a little sexual healing. Does that sound familiar? Yes, it does. Are, are you trying to get me out of town because you want to have a chance with Holden? Now, what kind of sense does that make? I'm here at your house, where Holden is not, because I want to be with him tonight. Duh. Fine, that's fine. Stay here in Oakdale. Guard Holden while Katie and Simon are shagging up. You know, you're probably right. They're probably gonna end up wherever they're gonna go, find a nice little honeymoon sweet Simon. He's gonna turn in early because he wants to catch up on his Bible reading. And Katie's gonna sit there and watch New Year's Eve on TV with the sound down, of course, because she doesn't want to disturb Simon, because that's just the kind of sweet girl Katie is. All right, fine, I get your point. <laughs> but what can I do about that now? I mean, how am I gonna find a babysitter on New Year's Eve to watch the kids? Gee, I don't know. It's too bad that Luke and Faith don't have their Aunt Rose in town, who happens to adore them. Too bad there's not a girl in town who looks just like their mommy to keep them happy for a while. You know what? Keep those little party hats for yourself. I get it. I... I... Are you sure this is the way that you want to spend your New Year's Eve? Traditions. Remember? If I am lucky enough to have those little kids in my life for the next year, I'll be in heaven. Aunt Rose! Hello! Lucky me! My lucky Luciano's still awake. Luke, I thought I tucked you in already. I heard Aunt Rose's voice. Can she stay, Mommy? Please? I don't know. Nothing rings a guy's bells better than the element of surprise. Okay. Okay, as long as you're back in bed by 9 o'clock. 9? Come on, sweetheart. You don't want your Mommy to worry about you while she's out tonight, do you? Nope. Okay, 9. Okay. Okay. Are you sure about this? I'm... Am I sure about this? Go on, Will. Go on, bring a new year in with a big bang. Where is your sense of adventure, Simon? We couldn't afford a nice tropical holiday, so the least we can do is pretend this train is something mysterious and exotic. All right, that's it. I'm not logging this stuff any further. We're sitting here. Okay. Oh, this is so exciting. I feel like I'm on the Orient Express. I wish we could just spend our whole honeymoon sitting here watching the world go by. Yeah, I took a long train trip like that once. Yeah? Where'd you go? Europe? No. It was the Pantagonian Express, from Vancouver all the way down to the tip of Chile. Wow. 
I don't know about wow. I was so broke I had to ride in the open air cattle car, wedged in between two heifers. You're amazing. Why, because I spend half my life as a penniless wanderer? No, because you're an adventurer. Everything you do is an adventure. Like this fake honeymoon? You know, I would hardly call that a, a adventure. Well, I think it is. Look, Katie, don't get too dazzled by adventure and make the same mistake I did. What do you mean? I did so much traveling to try and find out what life was really about. When the whole time, everything you need to know is right here. You say the sweetest things, even if they're not about me. I think I'm gonna take a little nap before it gets too rowdy in here, okay? So how's your pregnancy? Uh, uh, how are you feeling? Okay. Fine. Yeah, I, every morning sort of feels like a month at sea, but I remember that. It passes. That's what they tell me. What they, what they won't tell me is when I'm... Uh, you know, it's nothing, really. I'm just being a worrywart or something, I guess. It's just a, a feeling I have or don't have, really. I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Um, it's just it, me and the baby. The idea that I'm gonna be a mother, uh, I, I sort of can't believe it yet, you know? I don't know, I, I've already planned out his little room and got all this stuff from Emma. I've even watched a videotape of a, a sonogram. But it just, it doesn't seem real. It's like, I'm gonna be a mother because the doctors say so or because people say congratulations. I, I keep, I keep waiting for this moment when, when it's really gonna feel true and then I'll know everything will be okay. You know, Parker is real. I, I mean, he's real for you, and the two of you obviously have a really strong bond. Yeah. Even when I was halfway around the world, I, I could feel him. I was certain he could feel me too. Were you always that connected? <laughs> uh, always. You mean, like, from the first moment I knew I was going to have him? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't think so. In the very beginning, the whole idea that I was going to be a mother was sort of a fantasy. That's what it's like for me. <laughs> well, pretty soon, something is going to happen that's going to turn everything you're feeling now upside down. You say you've seen the same apparition more than once? Yeah. Oh, I've seen her a bunch of times. She's been very persistent. She? Are you sure this ghost is a woman? Oh, yeah, I'm positive. You got any idea who she is? Um. Uh, Vicky, my, my late wife. That's pretty special. Mm -hmm. Pretty special indeed, knowing the spirit personally. Now, how long has she been on the other side? Well, about a year now. It was, uh plane crash. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. Crossed over unexpectedly. She's still restless. Young man, how'd you like to be in my roadie while we're here in Oakdale? Oh, yeah, sure. What do you want me to do? Well, since this is where most of the sightings have occurred, mm -hmm. help me set up right here in the heart of the action. Right, let's, let's, let's go. go. Nice. Uh, infrared thermal scanner. Infrared thermal scanner. Check. Electrostatic charge meter. Uh, check. Motion detector. Check. Mr. Mr. Whip. Whittle, uh, when my wife was on this side as, as opposed to the other side, she didn't have much faith in technology. I mean, you sure this is gonna help find her? Oh, this is the best equipment in the business. But it doesn't find her. She, she finds us. Mm. This equipment just lets us know she's here. And, and you're gonna need all this, all this stuff? Probably. You know, there are certain whistles that only a dog can hear because the pitch or vibrations are so high that it's beyond our range of hearing? Yeah? Well, our, our eyes work the same way. We can only perceive within a very limited range. And everything vibrates, you know. 
spirits just tend to vibrate on a higher frequency than what the normal eye can pick up. So how come I can see her? I guess you're just one special high frequency little lady, ma'am. Great. Lucky me. But if she's made several visits, she she might be learning to get stronger and maybe soon you won't be the only one that sees her. Uh, Mr. Whittle, uh, what is this for? Uh, heck, even a ghost might enjoy a little music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we have big trouble. At first, it was like this fluttering. Sort of like a butterfly in my stomach. I wasn't even sure what it was, really, but I started to look forward to it. And time went by, days and weeks, and then all of a sudden, he kicked me. <laughs> That's when I understood it. I wasn't alone. I was living for two people. I was a mother. Wow. That's exactly what I'm waiting for. It will. And when you feel that... that life moving inside you... trust me, you will feel so connected to that baby, you will never remember it any other way. I hope it happens for me like that. It will. It's like this... The world has this big secret that nobody's letting you in on. And once you have your baby, you know what it is. It's like... You suddenly become part of something so much bigger than you. And yet it's unique because you think... You feel like you're the only person in the world who's ever experienced it. It's the most inc incredible experience in the world, really. The secret bond between you and your baby. And it rises above everything else the world can throw at you. With sorrow, and pain, and regret, and men. All of it, really. Carly? Um, is anything wrong? What is it? Um, is, is the music included in the all-ghost-busting price? You got a good sense of humor, little lady. I like that. That's gonna come in real handy when things get spooky. Ah, careful, Junior. <laughs> Crazy, crazy. I have turned my apartment over to a lunatic. Look at this, look at this. It looks like the, the, the central switching station for the ghost trolley. Just give him a chance, Jake. I mean, come on. After all, you are the one that asked Adam to find you an evidence-producing Ghostbuster, right? So now he's here. So how are you supposed to be your evidence if he doesn't use his tools, right? So let's just let him work. Adam says he's the best. This is weird. This is weird. Can't be any weirder for you than seeing Vicky's ghost is for me. She has made it into my phone lines, into my dreams, and into your living room. So, frankly, I don't care if Mr. Mr. Whipple Whittle is, is a few angels short of a choir, Jake. If he can figure out what Vicky wants from me, then I need to go with it. Okay. I just want you to know that this is the longest long shot in the history of the world. We don't have a choice. We have to try it. I have to know why Vicky keeps showing up and what she wants from me. I can't keep living like this. I, I, I can't. Know that. I know that. So just keep an open mind about it, okay? Please, for I'm me. Open. I'm open, I promise. That's it. Everything's hooked, lined, and sinker. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we'll just set the monitor up in the bedroom and give our pretty phantom a little breathing space and see what happens. Adam, shoot out the light, son. All right. Stop, Rochelle. Rochelle, Illinois. You may use all the doors. Oh, hungry. You know, I did think ahead and I packed some snacks, but they were in my bag, the one that you made me leave behind. So the least you can do is make it up to me. I don't know, I'm sure you're gonna tell me how. Can you go to the club car and just get us some sandwiches? No. And... <laughs> no. No, there's no way I'm gonna fight my way through all those drunkards. Look, I don't think you're going to starve if you don't eat right this minute. Simon, it's our honeymoon. It's a... Uh, it's a pretend. 
fake honeymoon, Katie. Look, we don't have much farther to go. Please, can't you wait until we get to the motel? Fine. But I'm gonna starve, I'm gonna starve while I'm sleeping. I'm going back to sleep. Announcement wake you up? What announcement? The announcement. They're giving away free champagne in the uh, dining car. I thought you were thirsty. Yeah, champagne doesn't exactly qualify as a thirst. Look, quencher. it's better than nothing, and it's free. Go on, go and get some. Okay, I guess you're right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank oh, you know what? Um, I'm pretty hungry after all. Can you can you please grab me a sandwich while you're up there? Oh, that's just great. We can only eat when you're hungry. All right, fine. What do you want? Um, liverwurst. And if I don't have that, head cheese. And if I don't have that, just the just the, the regulars, ham, turkey, whatever. And, and can you get them to make it fresh? I don't like those plastic wrap deals. This is a train, not a gourmet shop. I don't even know how I'm going to get back to all these people. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Head. Just, just, I, I, I'll, if you're not back soon, I'll come and get you. All right, just stay put, and I'll come looking for you. Come on. Go. Thanks. What are you doing here? I heard the man of my dreams <laughs> was going on a train. So How did you? You said we had to be extra careful. So crashing your honeymoon, being miles away from Agent Hollowell, isn't that being extra careful? Okay. You do not know what this means to me. Are you going to tell me? No, no, thank you. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah. I was just talking about Parker and how much he means to me. I couldn't help but remember how I almost lost him. You mean when you were in Hong Kong? I, I, I can't imagine how awful that must have been to be separated from your child for so long. The, fe the fear of never seeing him again was overwhelming to me. It was the worst part about being away. It was so much more excruciating than the idea of losing... losing anyone. I, I used to imagine myself coming back to Oakdale. It's a very old woman finding Parker a successful lawyer. Rich and powerful. And somehow he would remember me, even though it had been so long since he saw me. And he would tell me how empty his life had been without me in it. And he would take me in and promise to take care of me until the day I died. And we'd be together again like we'd never been separated at all. Out there, huh? <laughs> no. No, that, that doesn't sound crazy. It sounds like somebody holding out hope against terrible odds. I'm sorry, Carly. I'm so sorry that you had to go through all of that. And if there were anything that I could do, I... No. No, you do not have to be sorry. I came here to apologize to you, and I've done that. I'm not trying to make us best friends. I don't want your pity. Just maybe now you'll understand a little better why I let myself be dragged away to Hong Kong again. 
Winston threatened my son. I had to protect my boy. I didn't have a choice. You want to know if there's anything you can do for me? There is. Sure. What is it? As you stand there with your hand on your baby's heartbeat, can you swear to me you didn't sell me out to Winston Lowe? get into your line of work, Mr. Whittle. Please call me Houdin. Okay, Houdin. It's an unusual profession. Well, yes, indeed. It's, it's a strange line of work, I'll grant you that, but it's, it's a calling I came to after kind of a, an encounter I had. An encounter? Like an alien encounter? No. Not with my mama. See, I was living with my sick mama smack dab in the middle of the Texas panhandle after I got out of law school. One morning I woke up and she was sitting on the end of my bed just staring at me. About as close as I am to you. I asked her what was wrong. She said nothing. And she got up, went downstairs, and put on her morning pot of coffee. When I went downstairs to have my coffee with her, I, I passed by her bedroom. Her door was ajar and I could see she was still in bed. And when I went in to check on her, she, she passed on. I'm so sorry. The coroner said she died in the middle of the night. It couldn't have been later than two in the morning. But but she was with me way after that. And and, and I, I swear I smelled that coffee just, just the same way I smelled it every morning she was alive. And I guess you could say when Mama passed, it, it, it started me on a, a lifelong quest to reach her on the other side. Any luck? Yeah, not as yet. But I tell you this, when I help other good folks like yourselves, I feel like I'm getting closer to her. Hmm. Wait, what? What is that? Look. Carly, you've got to believe me. I never realized that Winston Lowe would send anyone after you. I know... I know how this must look, and I, I don't blame you for thinking the worst. But it is the God's honest truth. I met Mr. Lowe in New York City by accident, just like I told you. And we started talking about the fashion industry, and your name came up. <laughs> when, when we realized that we both knew you, I, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that he knew you, much less that he... And while I will admit that I didn't have the nicest things to say about you. Winston Lowe didn't give me the impression that he was dangerous. I had no idea that he meant you any harm. I would never intentionally hurt you just to be with Jack. And I am truly sorry for the chain of events that it set in motion for you. That's the truth, Carly. You know something? I believe you. I think you really are sorry. So then it's over. I will close this chapter. It's a new year. Time to get on with our lives. You can't imagine how relieved I am to hear you say that. I better get this birthday boy home, huh? I'm, I'm really glad that you came over. Uh, really, the stuff that you, the stuff that you said about um, feeling the baby, that really helped. No problem. There you go. Maybe we could do it again sometime. Julia. Don't take this the wrong way, okay? I meant what I said about retracting our claws in front of the little ones. But as I said, 
I'm not looking for a new friend. Of course not. Me neither. Okay. Here. Julia. Take care of that baby. Hold him close. Never forget to feel him every moment. Because you never know what the next moment might bring. I just had to come. Two years is just too long to wait for something that I want so badly, so I've made a decision. To do what? To follow you anywhere you go, and I'll meet you in motel rooms. I'll catch glimpses of you across darkened movie theaters or across the aisles of speeding trains. I'm ready to create any life that we can have together. Are you? Me? I am ready. I am so ready. I thought this honeymoon was going to be torture, but now that you're here, nothing else matters. This stop the cab. Please use the last three cars only. Oh, Katie, she is going to freak out when she finds out that I'm here. Don't worry about Katie. Hyman. What? There's nobody here. Where did everybody go? Well, they probably went out to celebrate in the dining car. Maybe they really are giving out free champagne. Do you think they'll be gone for a long time? I think that's exactly what it means. I've waited for this for so long. I'm just... I know. It's been too long. I know. Be at heaven's gate. <laughs> I don't see anything. Look, it's right there. Yeah, do you see those? See those there? Energy particles. Wait, what do they mean? What does it mean, that mean? It means we're about to have a spirit ready to say, hi de ho They're so beautiful. Yeah, I still get a chill up my spine every time I see them. I, I, I can't believe how quick we got a response. And she must want to communicate real bad. What was that? What's the noise? What is that, your equipment or something? Uh, spirits can be louder in Grandpa's Sunday tie. That's, that's just their way of letting you know they're around. Wait, look. Look, something's coming. But th that's her. That is, that's Vicky. That's Vicky standing right there. Oh, I wish you guys could see that. I wish you could see what I've been seeing. We see it? Oh, we see it. We see it. We see her. We see it. Good work, partner. Oh, we knew you here. <laughs> I'm so sure you want to go out there. You let there. him go. Hey, did I get here in time? Uh, not if you wanted to catch Carly. She's gone. Carly was here? Mm-hmm. Sure you didn't know? No. She came over right after you, uh, called from the squad room. Sure you didn't make her? No. My talks with Carly are about business. You know that. And wh why, why would I invite her over here, especially after what she did the last time? Well, I don't know what prompted the visit, but, uh... <laughs> it was strange. It was actually almost nice. Nice? Nice how? What, what, what you want? To apologize. She realized that what she had done the other night was wrong. And she wanted to make peace. This is Carly we're talking about, right? Carly Tenney? Mm hmm She actually opened up a little. We put a lot of stuff behind us. Mm, that's hard to believe. <laughs> I know. Look, um, I've been a little overboard where Carly is concerned. And I know that you saw her today. And I, I just... I want to say that if you had anything to do with her coming no, on I just, I just said to you that I had nothing. Shh. I just want to say thank you. Now let's just leave it alone and put this whole Winston Lowe episode behind us. Okay. <laughs> All right, you got a deal. 
Hey, why don't we go upstairs hmm? and get all cozy and celebrate the new year the best way we know how? That sounds good. <laughs> good? Oh, no, no, it's going to be much better than good. It's going to be the best. You know why? Why? Because I get to celebrate a whole new year loving you. This is such a special day for us. Do you know why? Why? Because this is the day you made me a mama. And it's also the beginning of a brand new year. And it's going to be a great year, this one. I just know it. And with my, my favorite fella with me, how could it be anything less? <laughs> hey, did I ever tell you that story about how I visited my friend Marty in New York? Did you see the big ball? Oh, did I ever? And, and Marty, you climbed up on this ladder, I went on his shoulders, and I got to change one of the balls, and I looked down at everybody, all those teeny-weeny people in Times Square. You know what I did? I put on my party hat, took out my party bell, and I rang in the new year. Wow. Whose bell is Mommy ringing this year? Uh, oh, you, you, you're talking about what I said before? Yup. Hmm. Sometimes they let me ring the bells in church. Did Mommy go to a party to ring some bells? Yes, she... Well, it, it, Mommy's going to a very, very exclusive party. What's exclusive? Uh, don't worry about that. You know, right now, I think we should just ring some of our, our own chimes. What do you say about that? How about we ring some chimes? Yeah. Okay, here you go. All right? One for me, one for you. Are you ready? Okay, you know how to do this, right? Ready, set. Are you set? Ready, set, go. Happy New Year! Hey, what's going on with Flash then? Any luck tracking down that guy that uh, sold him to you? Actually, I, I've been so bogged down with the holidays, I really haven't had time to look into that. But tomorrow morning, I'm going to go over to WAK and see if I can find that tape of the horse show. Although I hope I can get in and out of there without stirring up too much noise. Now, what would anyone want with a tape of a horse show made a year ago? Uh, one of those reporters mm. sees me in the archives, they might start sniffing around, wondering what I'm doing. I don't want anybody to investigate this if I know what I'm dealing with. Why don't you go over there tonight? New Year's Eve, local newsroom, probably just a uh, skeleton crew, right? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to do that, Joe. I think that's a good idea. Well, uh, hold on. You think you should go out at this hour with all the lunatics on the road and everything? Oh, that's OK, Mom. I'll we'll be careful. Besides, I, I need something to do, you know? I just can't sit around here wondering, wondering what Lily might be doing tonight. Where is Lily tonight? Uh, she's at home with the kids. I'm sure they're in bed already. And I wouldn't be surprised if Lily she's in bed herself. Hey, Good take night. it easy now. Be careful. Bye. From the law, the last thing you need... Whatever happens in your life, that's your business. ...are complications. She's going with me. Especially when it involves a woman... Think that a Beaumont's in love with you? ...and a cop obsessed with her. 
need to have a heart to heart. I don't have time. You and me are going. 